Welcome to another episode of The Way We Saw It. Today in Bari. Bari is the second largest city in southern Italy after Naples and the capital city of the Puglia region. And today we are going to show you the historic sites of this university city, which is probably the liveliest city in the south. Uh, but today we are going to concentrate more on the cultural side of this beautiful city. We are here on the Piazza Mercantile and behind me you can see the fountain Piagani, I think it's the name. And actually it's called the fountain of the four faces because if you look on the top, just the white part, it's a, a carved faces or the shape of faces inside. And this fountain was actually donated by Isabel de Aragon, where we will talk very soon uh, also about it. And she donated several fountains actually to the city of Bari, so the people have uh, access to fresh water. And this is the only one which is left. The Palazzo del Sedile at the Piazza Mercantile uh, used to be the seat of the government in Bari and it hosted also a theater, many things, and in the 16th century it had a very big reserve of gunpowder that exploded and destroyed it. And then they built it again, and gradually it has received also a clock tower, and today this house is empty, it's not in use anymore, but it is still a beautiful building on this square. Piazza Mercantile, of course, used to be the market square, very, very lively. Today it's not a market square anymore, it's a place where the youth is gathering in the evening in several bars and restaurants. And this column behind me used to be a place where the little criminals were attached for three days, I think, and nights, naked. So it was an embarrassment uh, place. So the whole pe all the people at the Piazza Mercantile could see them. Now it also has this lion there. It's supposed to bring you prosperity and luck if you touch it. So this is a typical Bari house and this was actually a palazzo of a very rich family and one of the first palazzos and you can see they have like a double entrance always, one to the street and then one back here where you go up to the flats or to the, yeah, to the house actually. Basilica of San Nicolas and San Nicolas many of you know who it is uh, San Nicolas is actually the patron saint of the city of Bari but funny enough he never put his feet in Bari during his living he was uh, a very powerful saint both in the Catholic and Orthodox uh, confessions and he died in the city of Mire in uh, Turkey so what happened is that many cities wanted to get his remains and from Genoa, Napoli, Venezia and Bari the sailors went to get it and Bari is closest to Turkey so they were the first ones who got there and 64 or 67 sailors uh, re recovered the remains of uh, San Nicola and brought them to Bari at the port, at the old port and then they didn't really know what to do with the remains so they put it on a, on a carriage with two oxes that uh, port brought the remains of San Nicola here and stopped here at this place. So this was a sign that the mausoleum or the basilica had to be built here. And you can see the two oxes still in the front of the church. And the names of the sailors who brought San Nicolas here are engraved on the walls of the church and underneath each name there is the, uh, the grave of the sailor. So they have been all graved here in the basilica. And this basilica also is a very particular one because it uh, has both confessions, Catholic and Orthodox. Catholic on the, no on the lower level, on the basement, and underneath in the crypta there is an Orthodox uh, church. And if you remember, in the past we showed you another church that has two confessions. It's the Agia Irini on the island of Eos. You can see the film here. Also has both confessions in one church. And here on the Basilica of San Nicola Square, there is also a statue of San Nicola. And this statue was offered to the city of Bari by the Russian president Vladimir Putin. And there is a little uh, sign in Italian and in Russian explaining this happening. We are now inside the church and as you could see from the outside of the church, the church is very, very sleek and wide. And 
The stone is actually limestone and it's a very white stone. And inside the church they have a beautiful baroque wooden carved ceiling which is overloaded with gold etc. So from the outside it's sleek and from the inside it's beautifully decorated. We are now underneath the Catholic Church, which is just above me, the main altar. And this is actually the crypt underneath. And this is an Orthodox Church. So we have the Catholic Church on the top and the Orthodox Church underneath. And the altar is actually made with the remains of St. Nicholas. So his bones are in the thumb underneath or inside of the altar. And the pillars which are carrying the church above here, each and every pillar here is different because these pillars are recycled from different places around the area. So they have different materials and different decorations on the top. It's very beautiful. This is the Colonna Miracolosa, which is the magic uh, pillar. And uh, on the 6th of December, the day of the San Nicolas, uh, single women come here and touch the pillar because when you touch it on the year that follows, you will find the husband. The fact is that outside on the 6th of December there's a lot of single men waiting for the single women because they know all the single women are coming out having touched this thing and have one year to find a husband. So the market is open on the 6th of December. And the Cathedral of Bari is actually the main church in Bari, but falls behind the St. Nicholas Church in its shape and its uh, interior. It's also built on uh, white limestone, has the rose windows and a bell tower, and inside really less spectacular. It also has a basement, like a crypta, but that's a Catholic crypta. We are now in the pasta making street and you can see different uh, orifettis with, made with different wheat. This is normal wheat, this is uh, burned wheat and this is brown wheat or dark or whole grain I would suggest. And did you know actually that the orichetti which are just made here behind me in this little kitchen or also down here on the whole street are only made with flour and with water so there's no egg in it because that's a tradition because it was too expensive in a uh, long time ago the people were poor and they didn't have money for the egg so this pasta is actually vegan. So behind me you can see the Teatro Petrocelli, which is a private-owned theater still and one of the fourth, the fourth biggest private-owned theater actually in, uh, in Italy. And it burned down 27 years ago and got completely renovated, uh, I think eight years ago and it's now open again. And it is very beautiful. It has the three famous uh, composers on the facade, uh, Verdi. <laughs> And the other two I forgot, I will put them down <laughs> below in the thing. And then on the, on the other side you can see the French Quarter with all these beautiful buildings uh, from that time also. And the Petrocelli family also owns a lot of these buildings even today. So they also finance the rebuild or the renovation together with the city of Bari of this beautiful theater. We are here on a typical piazza and I just got hit by a pigeon almost. Behind me you can see a typical uh, townhouse where people are living and most of these houses are like three or four floors. On the ground floor you have the living room and the bathroom and on the next floor 
it's uh, a, a, a bedroom and on top it's another bedroom and the living room is actually outside it's on here on the piazza and the higher these townhouses are from the former times so it showed also how wealthy these families actually were and you can hear there's always parole on the square and the people are talking because all the families are outside on the square and they leave the door open because they trust each other and it's like a small community on each little square here and in the middle of the old town there is this restaurant called Scagliozze and Scagliozze is actually fried polenta first cooked and then fried and the owner here is preparing the food on the street her kitchen is here in the middle and she is entertaining of course the guests also while she cooks Ciao, Eh hey, bravo! Ha una gamba o a due? And it's made by Donna Carmela, who's running her restaurant on the street. And she prepares everything on the street for her guests. And this is her speciality, Scagliozze. And here comes the main course, orecchetti with vegetables. And now we're having an expressino freddo at Gentile Gelateria next to the castle and this is a cold espresso which is mm, it tastes like ice cream, coffee ice cream and this place is also the best place for ice cream so if you ever come to Bari you have to come here and taste the ice creams and every day they have special uh, specials of the day and today it's called Crema, uh, I have to look, and Crema Antica, which is like a vanilla ice cream with a lemon pieces inside. And I think I got it already, Marty. This is how it looks. It's so good. You can't believe how good it is. We are here now at the seafront of Bari, the old town of Bari. Behind me is the Swabian castle of Bari with two towers towards the city and one towards the sea because actually the greatest enemies of this castle were from the city, not from the sea. It was built by the Normans and they were hated by the populations of Bari, population of Bari so much uh, that the Normans actually destroyed the city and then the Swabians took over and now it is a museum and uh, has exhibitions inside. The entrance fee is 9 euro, so we decided this time to skip that. A few other things on Bari. Bari is a cruise ship destination as well. Currently we can see there are three cruise ships. Uh, one cruise ship is up to 5,000 people, so you can imagine what amounts of people there are strolling in the old town of Bari and all the souvenir stands that are there to please these cruise ship tourists. Uh, as you heard from the other parts of the video, uh, Isabel de Aragon was a very prominent personality here in Bari. When she moved here, she brought with her all the Milanese prominence and rich people who built all these palaces in the old town. Uh, her daughter actually then took over from her and she was the Duchess of Bari, but at the same time the Queen of Poland, so that's why in the Bari flag, the colors white and red are just like in the Polish flag. In Bari they speak this very funny uh, Italian dialect which is very much influenced from the Greek language and from the Arabic language. So if you understand Italian you will probably not understand the Barinese uh, dialect. And the woman who was serving us the orecchiette just earlier, she probably or, or honestly is the queen of that square she very loudly used this language and nobody really could understand her in a few days we are going to get a car and we will start discovering more of the of the Puglia and the surroundings of Bali there's a lot to see also around this city so this was the way we saw it in Bari in Puglia in the south of Italy 
thank you for watching put the thumbs up on on below just down there thank you for watching safe travels always bye